Good morning, everyone. I'm sorry we're starting a little late this morning. We've had some technical issues. And you are at the First Congregational Church of Lincoln, United Church of Christ, and this is our Sunday worship. I welcome you all to our last Sunday service in July. I cannot believe the month of July has flown so quickly. Um, I would like to thank Morgan. She works week after week, and when we get technical glitches like we have this morning, it gets frustrating. <laughs> and so uh, there will be no music that you can hear this morning. We're having an audio problem with the music. Not sure why. Um, and the camera that we used last couple of weeks got borrowed and not brought back in time for service this morning. Oh, I have no fear because I know where it is, but it is what it is. No, I'm texting Steve. Okay. And as we speak, Morgan is working on the technical issues. Other announcements. I know the newsletter is out. Um, for those of you in building this morning, please do pick up your copy before you leave. Um, I would suggest one family at a table at a time. Um, for those of you who receive it by mail, you should be getting that this week, early in the week. Um, other announcements. Donna? Hi. If you don't mind, I just want to speak on the search committee meeting we had the other night. Um, we did meet on uh, Thursday night with Jennifer. And at this time, we um, have kind of put a little um, breaking to it because we need to have a meeting with Jeff Jenks, Jenks <laughs> the new um, leader at the UCC that took uh, Dan Walden's place. I'm going to stop you there for a second okay. so I can repeat it because those online are not here. Oh, okay. Um, what Donor is saying is that at the search committee meeting on Thursday night, we decided to take and put the search committee on at least a short hold until we can better assess the needs of the congregation. Um, the plan is to meet with the Reverend Dr. Deborah Jenks who is our interim associate conference minister. She took the place of Reverend Darren Morgan. So, okay, we're there. Other Donna, do you want to just come stand here? If you stand here, they can hear you. That way she doesn't have to. Close enough? That should, yeah, that should be fine. Is on? Okay. I really don't have much. Excuse me, I gotta take this in. I really don't have much to say that Pastor Sue didn't. Just that everybody please be in the spirit of prayer. Um, as you all know, this pandemic has caused a lot of disarray with everybody everywhere. And, um, we probably are not, and I don't mean to be negative Nelly, but we probably are not going to have a big uh, pool to choose from. We financially are doing okay at this time, but as winter comes and the heating bill stacks up and electricity, we are going to let the regular renters in. And if school starts and the adult ed continues, the cultists want to come back. The DMV wants to come back. Um, our AA group wants to come back and meet here. So um, there'll be a little bit of, of financial help that way. But as you all know, we missed out on the River Driver Supper this year. We have not resumed the regular bean supper um, suppers. <laughs> So um, our first strings are kind of tight right now. And I just want you all to know it's in the newsletter, but we appreciate everybody that's still doing their pledges, their ties, whatever little bit you can do is very, very much about, uh, welcomed and appreciated. Um, as soon as we have this meeting with Ms. Jenks, we will um, 
be coming to the church either via in person or uh, live over the internet or by mail uh, with some questions for you to answer and help us to direct it, help us decide what direction to go in um, as we continue this search progress. Um, I guess that's it. Pastor Sue, do you have anything to add to it? Thank you. Quite an echo. Um, I have spoken with Reverend Jenks um, on Friday, and I am waiting to see what her calendar is. We are hoping to meet the search committee in the next couple of weeks. Um, but I'm waiting for her to check her calendar. So we'll go from there. And lots of prayers um, for the congregation. We want to continue to do God's work. To do that, we really need a spiritual leader. Um, maybe not half time like I am. We made a decision a couple of three years ago to go from full time to half time. Maybe we need to do something similar again. I don't have an answer. Um, I've been praying about this for months, and I just God hasn't said what it is that He wants in this congregation. But I think we all need to be very careful and give from our hearts so that maybe we can get through this difficult time and get back on an even keel in 21. So, other announcements. Let us center ourselves for worship. And I invite you to join in our responsive call to worship. A mustard seed, a great and mighty shrub, emerges. The spore of the yeast can leaven the whole loaf of bread. The people bring hope and peace to God's world. Come, let us praise the God of great and mighty wonders. Spirit of sore and gratitude for the opportunity. God gives us to serve. Amen. And our first hymn that we can come along to is God of Grace and God of Glory. Mm -hmm. We're not playing at all. No. Okay, so we're passing on all music this morning since the computer is not cooperating. Let us be in a spirit of prayer as we join together for as we invite God to be present with us this day. God, your place before us, the images of the small, the tiny mustard seed, the grain of yeast, the small treasure, and remind us that we, though we think of ourselves as small, are not insignificant in your kingdom. Open our hearts and spirit to you in thankful remembrance of the ways in which we can serve throughout all our lives. Amen. And while Linda is winning the kingdom, um, Gail, would it be possible when it comes time for you to play in the doxology and the Gloria? Yes. Okay, well, not yet. We, we're not there yet. We'll be after the sermon, but. Is that where we have something? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Diana, are you up for reading? You're good to go, Diana, if you want to start talking.
at Debian. Lord, of Hi, Diana. can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Nobody, else can. Nobody else can, I guess. <sighs> Hang on a second. We're going to do a workaround. Unless it starts giving feedback. Everybody guard your ears. <laughs> Try saying something, Diana. Testing. Can you hear me? Again. Testing. Can you hear that? Oh, not really. Should we abandon it? Okay, go ahead, Diana. We'll try it out. First Kings 3, 5 to 12. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, you have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, O oh Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, but I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, since you have asked for this, and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have you asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice. I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Our second reading is Romans 8. 26 to 39. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our heart knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed in his, to the likeness of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. <laughs> what then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? Is it God who justifies? Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus who died. More than that, who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God is in, that is in Jesus Christ, our Lord.
five gallon water jug that he fills up with coins. We emptied every couple of years. All the coins go in there. And during the pandemic, when I was home with nothing else to do, I did a lot of wrapping coins. And it turned out in that container that we had maybe half filled, I think I rolled to think of dollars of pennies. Now, a single penny doesn't go very far, right? But fifty dollars of pennies goes very far. And that's like the seed that God plants in each one of us. A single seed might not go very far, especially when it's just planted. But as that seed grows and grows and grows, God becomes so much stronger in us and us in God. So those images are all like a mustard seed. And we grow in God. As we get older, and from the first time we begin to know God, so that God grows strong in us, and we grow strong in Him. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for growth, for the outdoors, for the trees, for the plants, for the flowers. We thank you for loving each one of us. No matter what, no matter what our challenges are, no matter our sometimes attitude, no matter what, help us, God, to nurture that seed that you plant in us, that seed that is you, that guides us on our journey. Let us show you love and be thankful. Amen. I invite you to be in a spirit of prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each and every one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Creator, for you are our rock and our redeemer. I do apologize, but it is just the other. <laughs> and I appreciate the windows open, whoever opened them. So I wanted to talk a little bit this morning about wishing a blood. How many of you have ever wished it a well, or fountain, or calm? I know I have. What about wishing on a star? Anybody remember the song? When you wish upon a star, your dreams will come true. And, and I kind of thought about that this week a little bit um, from our King's reading. What do you think you wish for? You don't have to say it out loud, but think about the kind of things you wish for, because I'm going to guess that you haven't wished for the same thing every time. I mean, that's my guess. Um, I know I'm not that consistent. I usually have different things that I'll wish for. Um, but some of the things I thought about, you wish for love. Um, what about happiness? How many of us have wished for happiness? Perhaps some have wished for riches. Now, there's a whole lot of kind of riches. There's the money kind, which is what the average person thinks of. But there's also being rich in God. How many of you have ever wished to be rich in God? Not one you think about too often. How about wishing for health? Especially as you get older, I think, from, at least for me, that's what I often wish for is better health um, and better knees. Um, that's a regular thing lately. Of course, that's in my prayers too. 
Totally separate. So, um, well, what other things can you think of? And you don't have to yell them out loud, but think about some other things you might wish for. I find it interesting. Because our, I know it was hard to hear Diana this morning due to our technical glitches. But in our first King's reading, the Lord came to young Solomon. We know what happens to the older Solomon later. He kind of doesn't follow God's rules. But when he was young, God asked him, what, do you, what should I give you? And I'll paraphrase that, what do you wish for? Now, any young person today would say, money, car, girlfriend, boyfriend, um, you know, think about it. We're a materialistic society these days, yet we still want relationship. I mean, it, the heart of everything is relationship, be it relationship with God, be it relationship with someone stuff. And yet, and I think it was probably that true back then, Yet that is not what Solomon wished for. He wished for wisdom. Hmm. Now we're not talking education, although some would say they go hand in hand, but I disagree. He asked for wisdom. To me, wisdom is knowing one, right from wrong, to learn from experience, to hear God's word for us and follow that. And I think back to my Aunt Jeanette, who passed in 2005. She had completed grade school in Carter Junior High. She was born in a different country. And she had to work to help her family out. So if you look at her from an educational standpoint, she wasn't highly educated. Yet she was one of the most wise people that I ever knew. And I didn't know my grandmother's soul because she died when I was six, so I only knew her a short time. But I think they both shared this in common is that she was wise. She didn't have an answer for everything, although it certainly sounded like it most of the time, because she would give you suggestions and guidance. And I remember asking her before I went to seminary in 2005, the summer before, and I said, and she was getting forgetful. You know, what do you think? Should I do this? Should I not do this? And she said to me, what is God telling you to do? Oh, okay. I haven't thought about that, right? Here God is calling me into the ministry, and I'm not thinking about what God's asking me to do. I'm just wondering what I should do. She said, if you're considering ministry, you need to consider why. He said, you know, you're a good nurse from everything I know. She says, you're a caring person, but why ministry? And so I left where she lived and thought about that for several weeks before I realized she had given me the answer, was to have a conversation with God. And indeed, I found my answer. Now, she didn't give me the answer, but she was wise enough to direct me where I could find it. Now, I'm sure there are people in your lives who have helped to guide you to answers that you were looking for. And I'm blessed to have had several. But ultimately, God is the one that can answer our questions. God is the one who gives us wisdom, who truly teaches us and helps people here on earth be our teachers and our guides. 
to guide us to the answers of right or wrong about everything. You know, I think about growing up and bullies in school. They didn't recognize that there was a big problem when I was grade school. They do today, although it still occurs. But I remember asking one Sunday in Sunday school and saying, why do people pick on me? And the Sunday school teacher, a very wise woman, said to me, because they don't understand what it means to be a child of God. That we might not all look the same or act the same, but we're all children of God and we need to respect one another. I think I was seven or eight at the time, and it totally changed my focus on how to deal with it. And I would later find out that the girl who was the worst at picking on me came from a home that the father beat on them on a regular basis, denied them food, denied them clothing, because he was an alcoholic. Her brother um, had one leg that was shorter than the other, so he had to wear special breaks. And he got picked on in school. But she didn't come to his defense. And it always made me sad that this girl did, really didn't know God, and she was in a terrible, terrible situation. And I was too young to do anything about it. I still think of her today, and this is more than 50 years old, even at that. And I pray that she found God and found direction for her life, and that no one picks on her and she doesn't pick on anyone. But that anger in her life is gone. Because that's what God asks us to do, is to follow his guidance for us. To get rid of those negative feelings, those negative attitudes, and to do our very best. This church is struggling right now from a financial point of view and from the number of people sitting out here. I'm very grateful for Zoom. So that we can have folks tune in and very great. But it's still, I have to tell you, looks odd to see so few sitting here. Yet for those that come in on Zoom, it's the only way, health wise, for many that they can join in. So I am grateful for Zoom and certainly it has kept me safe in many months during the pandemic. We all need to remember we're here or we're not here for reasons that others may or may not understand. And to be understanding of that, be supportive of that. And yet, this church still has much work to do. We are grateful for those who continue to give to help this church out, continue to do God's work. We are grateful for those who contribute to the food cover, and for Don putting out the tub and picking up the tub two days a week. We are grateful for those who serve on committees. Every little bit that you do for the church, you're doing for God. You have the wisdom to know that even some small thing will reap benefits for God, for this church, and for the world. So take those mustard seeds that God planted in each of you so long ago. Well, most of you so long ago. We've got a few young people here. <laughs> Some of our seeds were planted longer ago than others. <laughs> but take those seeds and nurture them and let them grow. God grow you and you in God, that you might hear his voice strongly, 
guiding you and directing you on your path in this world. And if you do it often enough, you just want to plant some other mustard seeds in others. And what a wonderful grove of trees you will have at the end. Be a blessing to others. Amen. Okay. I'll tell I'll cue you when I'm here. We are so blessed. Oh, hang on, we're taping. As an adhesive tape. We're already taping the service. But she answered everything. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. As I said earlier, and as Donna spoke earlier, everybody's contribution of time, of talents, and of treasures helps us to continue this work through this congregation with this family of faith that we might continue to serve others in God's name. I invite you to be generous by offering your tithes, your gifts, at the back door offering site, or if you are online, um, please do want to listen to this first. We don't get our donate button working or a webinar. Hopefully, we do this so we will. We have a bunch of the PayPal, so we are changing who we're using. But for the time being, we want your contribution. The address is on the bulletin, it's on our website. Maybe it's on our Facebook, but not on the website. Yes. But do what you can to help this church through this difficult time. I invite those that are here in the congregation to rise for the dark side. that we receive today and throughout the week. These gifts are given in your name and that of your Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I've got a pencil. We come to the time that serves as time and opportunity to thank God for the gift of life. 
sins, which he avoids and taught us inside. And they brought it the signs to be here this morning. And those of you on Zoom or Facebook Live, um, just put it in the chat box and we will get it to you. Make sense? Oh God, we ask for prayers for Anne and her family as the decision has been made to move her into hospice. Be with them in these final days and weeks. Comfort them. Let them know and feel your love. For we know you feel too long. You will call her home to you. Help them to enable us to win this really last bit of time. And raise up the last a lifetime. The Lord hear our prayers. Blood. Lord, if we ask for prayers for our brother who is currently in the hospital, battling a severe infection. Help her doctors and her medical team find the appropriate treatment that will combat this infection. Help them to give her comfort and support in this difficult time of limited to no visitors. Help her find a way to stay in contact with family and friends by a computer or by phone. Be with her as the family and friends support her from a distance. May her sad support her, not just from that at some point. Uh, support her in any way that they can, that she will heal and return home for more healing of I have a joy. Uh, last week we prayed for my mother in law who was in the hospital. Um, all her test results came back. She had a GS, uh, GCA biopsy, it came back negative. Her blood work came back negative for a heart attack, and she got to go home. So. Still a lot better. They're still not entirely sure what happened, but it went away. So hopefully it doesn't come back. Yeah. We express to our God for Morgan and her family. Her mother-in-law is home. All testing was negative. How then we get to the cause of her ailment? Well, but we are grateful and thrilled that she is so so much better. We thank you for those who prayed for her healing. We thank you, God, for hearing these prayers. Oh, Lord, continue to heal our prayers. Oh God, we ask you to be with Sonia and her husband. We pray for his healing from the soul. We pray for quality medical care that they transfer him to 
and we have the same time. We pray for both you and Sonia as they deal with the discomfort and pain of our place. Comfort them, God, love them, support them, and heal them in the best way that you can. O Lord, hear our prayers. Nope, nothing there. Let us see and see the prayer. Oh God, we ask that you hear each and every prayer that was spoken out loud, that was spoken here or anywhere. And especially those that are so in the deep places of our hearts, the ones that we need to help. We thank you for listening. We thank you for answering. We thank you for guiding us, supporting us, and loving us. Just as Jesus promised us, and also taught us this prayer, saying, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil, that thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you all online. All right, everybody. Have a good day.